Thank you for joining. My name is John Woodward, and in this module, I will be adding to the theory that you learned about from Bob and show you how a practical design for an isobuck can be done. Here's our first example of how Maxim has reduced the solution size of your isolate, isolated solution by removing the optocoupler. The Max 17681 is a 4.5 to 42 volt, highly efficient isolated DC to DC converter. With integrated MOSFETs for synchronous primary side operation, the IC delivers highly efficient and low power dissipated, amounting to reduction in temperature rise for your isolated power needs. Primary side sensing eliminates the need for bias winding, as well as the components needed for the optocoupler feedback. This results in a reduction of the number of external components, solution size, and enables ease of design for the system engineer. With 42 volts of input capability, the built-in protection features like peak and sync current limit, programmable enable and UVLO, and over -protect temperature protection, the MAX 17681 is ideal for harsh industrial environments. As you can see, we have a relatively simple schematic here. On the left side, we have our input voltage and the bypass capacitor associated with that. We have a VCC cap for cleaning up the internal LDO bias voltage our soft start capacitor for determining the slew rate of the output voltage, and finally the loop compensation. On the right side, we have our transformer with the primary side capacitor and feedback resistor divider network. Then on the secondary side of the transformer, we have our rectifying diode, output capacitor, and the preload circuit with the Zener diode. Our isolated DC to DC converter is basically in two states during the steady state operation. One when the high side FET is on, and one when the low side FET is on. Here we have the condition of the high side FET being on. What we are highlighting with the red arrow is the current flow through the high side FET, which is between V in and LX. The current then flows through the primary side of the transformer and charges the primary side of the capacitor C2. In this case, the positive side, the positive end of the transformer is at the top in this picture and with the windings of the transformer in the opposite direction, the positive end of the secondary side is at the bottom. Our rectifying diode is off, and in steady state, C7 is supplying the load current. Here are the associated waveforms for the state where the high side FET is on. With the high side FET on, the input voltage is biasing the primary side of the transformer, and the current is ramping, as seen in the green waveform, and charging the primary capacitor. The diode is off due to the transformer polarities. We are simplifying the previous schematic a little, but we added the, the parasitics typically associated with the isolated solution in the transformer. Now we have the second state of our steady state operation, and we have turned off the high side FET and turned on the low side FET, located between LX and P ground. Now the energy stored in the primary capacitor is applied over the primary side of the transformer and it is biasing it in the opposite way as before. This results in the secondary side voltage polarity forward biasing the diode and charging the output capacitor C7 and supplying the output to the load. Here are the associated waveforms for the low side FET being on. Again the simplified schematics with the parasitics are included. VLX is now at zero volts during this state. The positive side of the primary winding is now at the bottom. This results in the diode being forward biased and current is flowing through the secondary side of the winding through the diode charging the output capacitor C7 and providing the energy to the load. If you have looked at the diagrams that we have showed, you may have asked yourself why can't we just use a transformer with the standard buck regulator and have the same isolated solution? The answer is in the parasitics of the transformer. The inability of the standard buck to handle those parasitics and in that our isobuck designs are specifically designed to allow for proper blanking time to deal with them. Using a device with insufficient blanking time will result in an unstable isolated solution. Here we are showing two waveforms, one of the ISO buck and the other of a standard buck. These waveforms show the starter performance of both solutions as they try to provide the output voltage of 15 volts at a given load. If you look at the waveforms on the left side, you can see that the ISO buck allows for negative current on the primary side. This is seen in the green waveform. On the right, the standard buck does not. 
This is the standard operation of the two designs, but the negative current flow is necessary to allow the V-out to ramp to the steady state and regulation. With the pre-bias feature of the standard buck regulators and without that negative current flow, the standard buck will go into current limit as it tries to charge the output capacitor and provide the current to the load. The standard buck regulator will never recover from that current limit state. You can see the impact on the output voltage of the standard buck regulator, which is highlighted as the purple waveform in the two plots. On the right, the output voltage tries to get to the steady state of 15 volts, but it cannot and can only get to about one-third of its target value. Let us look at some test data for an example using our MAX17681 ISO buck converter. We have a target input voltage of 24 volts with a range of 17 buck with a range of down to 17 volts and a max of 32 volts, a V-out target of 24 volts with a tolerance of plus or minus 10%. Our output is expected to be at 100 milliamps. The isolation specs are about 1.5 kV DC for one minute. And the insulation type is functional with an ambient temperature of about 85 degrees C. Here we have the results as shown as the test data. Efficiency is good with a relatively flat 90% efficiency over the load current. As far as regulation, notice that I show you data from 20 milliamps onwards. We'll get to why this is in a minute. The topology has a tendency to peak charge the output at light loads, but once we get past this, the regulation is pretty decent. We have succeeded in taking wide input voltage with about plus or minus 30% of variance and converting it with an isolation to an effective accuracy of about plus or minus 8%. If you are looking for a simple circuit to take 2x variation on the input and convert it to a semi-regulated isolated output, then the ISO buck is worth looking into, especially if you're planning on downstream post-regulation with some LDOs, etc. One of the design issues with the isolated regulators is the tend to peak charge the output voltage at light loads. In the absence of any loading on the output, the voltage will tend to rise higher than the desired target voltage. To minimize this effect, we have added the Zener diode circuit. The selected Zener diode is used to clamp the output voltage with a minimal load. Using a Zener or TLV431 based clamp to provide the loading at lighter loads will not affect the performance. As the load increases, the output voltage will be regulated below the breakdown voltage of the Zener and it will be disconnected from the load. Specifying your transformers is as important to the proper operation for isolated converters. You will need the basic electrical specs of the design and the EE SIM tool will help you derive those for you with the MAX17681. You will need to understand the amount of isolation required in the application, 500 volts, 1.5 kV, etc. There are certain sizes recommended based on the power needs of the converter. You can see with a one watt requirement, the recommendation is an EP5 or similar size transformer. And for five watts, you might need an EP13 or something similar in that size. For leakage inductance, higher leakage translates to poor output voltage regulation and low frequency current ringing. For this reason, it is important to specify a transformer that is less than 1% leakage inductance. The self-resonant frequency of the transformer needs to be specified as well to control the parasitic capacitance of the transformer. You can see the equation listed here at the bottom of the um, spec. This concludes the practical design of the ISO buck configuration featuring our MAX17681 5 watt 4.5 to 42 volt isolated converter. I hope this helps you understand some of the basics of its use and how it can help you with your isolated design needs.